What's going on, folks? It's 60 days and on the pistol brakes rule, we are at the halfway point of the 120 amnesty day period. The question I have for you is, will you obey? Time is getting short. Y'all remember back before December, we was waiting to see when the pistol brakes rule was going to drop. Now we are waiting 60 days out to see if it actually gets shut down. Is the pistol brakes rule going to make it to the deadline? And if it does make it to the deadline, what is your position? Like I said, welcome to the video. Glad you found it. Today, I'm going to be discussing the latest updates surrounding the pistol brakes rule. Unfortunately, we had a little bit of bad news. This is the first bad news I had to report in a while. But make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to be discussing through the video as well as towards the end of the video where the hope lies as far as the Second Amendment against the pistol brace rule. So let's get straight into it. Those that are new to the channel, welcome. And if you have a pistol brace firearm or firearm with a pistol brace, such as the CZ Scorpion, such as the Micro Draco, such as the Strybog, such as the B&T, then these are all of the really fun firearms that the ATF wants to ban or make not as fun because those are the firearms that we like to put pistol braces on. It makes it a lot funner and it makes it a lot safer. So we don't know why they want to bother us with making our firearm even more dangerous than it could be. But the fact of the matter is it doesn't make any sense. So real quick, if you think the pistol brace rule is ridiculous and needs to be shut down immediately because it's unconstitutional, then go ahead and click that like button. And let's get right back to the video. So the ATF, back on January the 31st, has given us 120 days, which takes us out to May the 31st. Now, we are at the halfway point of that 120 days. So now we are at 60 days. And once again, the clock is on. 60 days until the deadline for the pistol brace rule. So some people are running to register now. Some people are really, really thinking about changing their stance on whether or not they were going to register. And some people are still feeling the exact same way they felt when it's all kicked off, that this thing is going to get shut down. But we can't be so sure. Now, like I said, it has given us that 120 days. We are at the halfway point of that. And the only options we have is to put a 16 inch burr. We can remove the brace. And I'm not even going to mention the third one. But the fourth one is to register with the NFA. Now, like I said, some of you may be really, really about to say, hey, man, I can't take it 60 days out. I don't want to be late. I mean, I don't want to miss the free SBR. So you're really, really thinking about going ahead and registering your firearm with ATF. I understand that. However, if you stick around to the end of the video, you will see that there is still hope in this fight against the pistol brace. But if we want to get it shut down before May the 31st, then it's got to start happening right now. So there are several organizations who have lawsuits versus the ATF. One firearms policy coalition, and they were looking for a preliminary injunction a few days ago. This preliminary injunction would have stopped or put a halt on the case until they actually came to a complete conclusion. However, this case took place in the Northern District of Texas, and wouldn't you know it, Judge Reed O'Connor, the judge that I spoke so highly about and gave so much praise to because I felt like he was doing a great job in the case versus frames and receivers, and it did not go the same way with the pistol braces. It did not go the same way. So I was very confused, but he alluded to something like there wasn't enough evidence to show that the FPC could prove their case. And he actually ruled in favor of the ATF. And I hate to say that because, like I said, I gave him a lot of praise. But he did rule versus the frames and receivers. Now, he did leave a glimmer of hope as to how the case could be won or how the argument can be won. So that is a piece of the glimmer of hope that I spoke of in the beginning of the video. But, yeah, Reed O'Connor, man, I can't believe you, man. You, I, I really just can't see how any judge could hear all of this and still go with in favor of the ATF. And like I said, it was very strange because um, even the argument that they made as far as common use. Now they're saying that it's only three and a half million. Originally they said it was seven million. So they cut that number in half, used three and a half million as the test amount. And they're saying that three and a half million is not common use. And I thought that's, that's crazy. Th three and a half million is well enough for common use, but we know it's about the firearms industry argues that it's about 10 to 40 million. So even let's just take the low number saying 10 million is definitely common use. But they would never use any numbers that have a true light 
because they need the number to be so low that it works in their favor. And Reed O'Connor, I'm definitely surprised that you really went and used the ATF's interpretation of how many firearms or how many pistol brace firearms are in the U.S. A lot of that was very surprising to me, but strangely enough, he ruled in favor of the ATF. What? And on the frames and receivers, I thought he was very, very fair to the Second Amendment, but not so much in this case. Now, the case may have to be ran back because Reed O'Connor definitely used some language saying that this didn't prove it. But he did leave some hope as to maybe the case being won. I thought the ruling was crazy. And I thought Reed O'Connor was out of damn line for using the ATF's estimation. when well, we know the ATF's estimation was way off. Definitely. It's always going to be. These nuts. Off. The hope <laughs> that there is one case left, which is the GOA, which is guns, gun owners of America and the state of Texas versus the ATF. That's going to be the battle of all battles. So make sure you pay attention to that case because that case, they were trying to get it to go before April the 1st, but obviously it's April the 3rd right now. So that means it didn't happen. Hopefully in a week or definitely at least before May the 31st, we need this case to be heard. And hopefully the GOA and the great state of Texas can get it done. I think that may be the case that it's going to take to actually shut this pistol brace rule down. And like I said, that's really the last bit of hope as far as getting it shut down before the deadline. So again, I asked the question, will you obey? You got 60 days to get yourself together. And down in the comments, let me know what would be the time where you say, you know what? It's 15 days left. It's 30 days left. It's 20 days left. What is the days left that you say, that, hey, I tried to wait. I just couldn't wait anymore. And now I'm going to go ahead and register. You know, shout out to all my people who are not going to register. Y'all got the same mindset I got. Not going to register. Will not comply. Now, if it's the law, then that's the law. But as far as uh, registering, I ain't registering nothing. So that's my stance on it. Um, I appreciate everybody who's been supporting the channel. Thank y'all for giving me ideas on updates. Thank you for hitting the like button. Thank you for sharing the videos. Um, it's a few folks out there that definitely always ride with me and rock with me, give me information, all that good stuff like that, man. So I appreciate all y'all. One of the best things you can do to support the channel as you've been doing is, man, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share the video. And also, man, leave a comment, drop a comment. Let me know what you think about the video. Let me know what you think about the subject matter. And uh, like I always say, those that stay ready ain't got to get ready. I'll see y'all on the next video.